Could we have a different winner? We've had six different winners this year. Could we have a new points leader when this is over? Emig and McGrath. Mc Kevin Windham. Windham shoots out of there like out of a cannon. Emig, he went from second on the outside to about 15th. The fireworks, in case you want to know about the bombs going off. For him to go forward, but you're going to have to see Jeff Emig push really hard. Emig in 14th place. He's come back before. He went wrong. You know, Wyndham was just looking at this 250 action uh, when he started in the... Well, he's running uh, th three seconds a lap faster than uh, Ricky Carmichael was. So that's right now, as he's going to take on Phil Lawrence to the inside. You see Kevin Wyndham on the final lap. Here's Kevin Wyndham, his first 250 Supercross victory. Team Yamaha. Look at Kevin Wyndham, shaking his head. Neil, congratulations on 250 victory number uno. Yeah, man, this feels great. Uh, last weekend, me and Yogue won too, and uh, I'm glad, you know, even though I'm not in the points, I'm glad to switch it around this weekend. Uh, you know, I just, man, I can't be happier. You know, I've been coming off injury, and then, you know, here I am getting second, and then first, you know, I mean, what more can you ask for? I, man, it just makes me look so forward to next year, and, uh, and I couldn't ask for anything better. Well, you still have a 125 championship to win, and that starts again no, next week. The first time in 18 years, Supercross returns to New Orleans. Gets a standing ovation from his friends and family here in Louisiana. Huffman is right behind him, though, by the team Suzuki rider Larry Ward trying to catch up with number eight, Kevin Windham. Beautiful move by Ward, just like he did in his heat race. Later, that Larry Ward, or eight years later, that Larry Ward became victorious again and once again on a Suzuki. Ward. Challengers, at least so far this year, are still pretty far back in the pack, so it's up to Ward right now to put the pressure and try to take the waste race away. Lusk is in seventh place right now as we take a look at our leaders battling it out. Larry Ward and Kevin Windham side by side. So close they can rub plastic. Windham gets the corner first. Get around him before that. Windham's going to have to cover that line. Larry Ward's having fun right now. He's picking his spots, coming through the whoops. I don't think these guys are looking behind him right now, but if they do, they're going to see that McGrath has moved into third. McGrath moving in front of Pashon. Flashy when he needs to be. Potentially could win his first Supercross here. The way he's riding so far. He's got the, the crowd on his side. Ward a little out of shape. Wyndham has only one, led one lap on the season so far coming into this race. Riding on the edge, doing whatever they can do to find a good line, try to get somewhere over a jump or into a corner without hitting a rut. That time flipping the bail, dropping the lap times now, the last lap, 53. McGrath. It's Jeremy McGrath. McGrath cutting to the inside. Can he take over second place? Yes. Kevin Wyndham, number eight, looking smooth so far. Still holding his lead over McGrath. If he can do that, he knows McGrath's in second now. <laughs> Ali Seymour, quite a competitor himself. He's got you're the man on that board. And he sure is tonight on this final lap of action. Everybody was saying Lusk and uh, McGrath and everything. I said, oh, it'd be too much of a storybook ending if this guy won. Look at the smile on that mechanic that works so hard. Milking it. The checkers for Kevin Windham with the heel clicker. Windham, his... Second career win, here. making sure he gets the Yamaha hat on. Team Yamaha's first of the year. Ready now as the board is sideways, and they're off in St. Louis. Supercross, main event underway. I don't believe McGrath got back ahead of Wyndham. That was the plateau Jeremy was talking about, jumping off of. Wyndham did it, looked like he had that pass made, but boy, it's a little bit risky. Uh, Jimmy was looking so forward to getting back in the race now. As we check out second place, the battle is on. Kevin Windham right behind Jeremy McGrath. With Jeremy without having to do that, be a lot less nerve-wracking. And he is staying glued to him, but Pichon is starting to pull away, Art. And Lusk. Well, that's going to give Windham a big boost of confidence to be able to pass McGrath. Stay with him and pass him. McGrath trying to come out wide, but Wyndham went just wide enough to stay out of his way. Wyndham feeling that they were letting Pichon get away. Pichon, a two-time Eastern 125 champion, as well as Wyndham. Wyndham won a 125 race here in St. Louis. Fields, and, and so do I, and what I've seen lately. The Suzuki is, is there. Wyndham makes the move on Pichon. And Mikel come back. Wyndham is just on tonight. He's riding super, and like, he's doing it with a cold, so. Oh, Kevin Wyndham. Oh, they both go down. Lusk stays up. Lusk in second is Wyndham. His third career win has won two of the last three races. A chilly night in Tampa, but things are warming up real quick. As our 250 main event is underway, and Ricky Carmichael. What a great start as Jeremy McGrath is in third. Jimmy Button.
That's the order so far, but Tortelli after Emmy shutting out Pichon, Dowd, and Ward. Diego before that brief crash. Now he gets a chance to prove it. Well, it was so depressing corner. And McGrath has moved into third just to make this up. On the note that he's healthy, I mean, he's, he's not left Florida. Uh, a look-see to Ezra Lusk. Great design of this racetrack. Advantage. Jeremy McGrath cuts to the inside. For the bar now with Ezra Lusk. Ezra Lusk. The best race of the year. Top four riders. That's going to allow Wyndham to get by. Amig is off the track. Wyndham triples right past his teammates. Better than I thought he might with that injury. And Kevin Wyndham is looking to challenge Jeremy McGrath, number 14. And now this is this is different for Kevin because he's worked his way into this position. He's been patient. He's actually closed the gap. Now he's... This was a fourth in the opener at Anaheim, and he's been very frustrated since that time. In the last race at Anaheim, McGrath to the inside, gets Carmichael. Carmichael tries to come back, but he's going to have to go to the outside here. Off that line, he just didn't realize McGrath was in there that tight the lap before. So Jeremy comes is Kevin. right where he wants to be. And Kevin Windham makes the move on Carmichael into second place. Because he won't encounter any lappers for quite a while now. Ali Seymour, former rider himself, Windham's mechanics say, come on! And it was motor mount bolts, who would have guessed that? Look at this out front, Kevin Windham battling with Jeremy McGrath. Windham. Plenty of places to get by. Windham is looking for his third consecutive year with at least one win. Windham will get collected in it. He's been the big mystery of the season. Windham cuts to the inside. Kevin Windham will have to battle him off as they look at each other coming over the triple. Incredible. It's a square back underneath them. No way. He just parked it, rode right through there casually, and Kevin was smart. More what we expected from him. Look at him go through those woods. Just letting that bike dance all around. And McGrath is not riding his race now. He's riding Here Kevin's. goes Wyndham to the inside. Wyndham has taken advantage of many riders in this race right there. Beautiful move by Kevin. Kevin Wyndham has taken the lead for the second time this year. He has led two laps. That was in Seattle. Think about the points. As Morocco just tries to fight up the ladder from a from a pool. Jean Michel Bale won three in a row here. His fourth career Supercross victory. Cross season. Ali Seymour, look at the smile on the big guy's face. Winner in six rounds this year. Well, we told you the field was deep this year. There's his girl, or fiance now. Welcome back to the uh, winner circle. Boy, it feels good. And uh, man, everybody's been asking you know, what I was doing wrong, and uh, and. Uh, and really just just prove that I can do it and, and that's the difference that I, I finally started relaxing and, and you know I didn't go out and shoot for the win I just went out to ride my best and you know going out and riding comfortably and, and fighting the bike and uh you know, the guys are really at Honda, really stuck behind me. and uh, it's The most consistent pressure Jeremy McGrath has ever <laughs> had on him, and you ended up passing him. Yeah, that was uh, pretty fun. I was right there behind him, and, you know, I told him after the race, I said, I know you wanted to win, but, man, that was a good race. And uh, in the middle of the race, we're sitting there yelling at each other over the triples, and, uh, you know, it's nice to, to go out there and uh, have a good race like that. Albertine with our helmet cam. Let's take a look at Jeremy McGrath as the gate drops, and we are underway. A great start by Ricky Carmichael on the inside on a getting across the chuck. It's Wyndham holding on to the lead against John Dowd and RC. Team Suzuki, Larry Ward and Jeff Albertine. McGrath is the best of my... Uh, what I can laugh. Greg Albertine dropping back as Wyndham now starts to pull a little bit of the lead on John Dowd. Come on, Jeremy. Jeremy's taking the inside line. There's Kevin Wyndham. What a race! It's too bad we didn't have more time to talk about the brilliant performance of Kevin Windham. Right hey, check out that number on the top of it. Kevin Windham's helmet. That's an old trick that John Michelle Bale used to do. Get better traction. They're off and running. The first photo of the 250s underway. Kevin Windham. The stars either. You can see him just getting out of the picture. Look how clean Windham and Tortelli are. First and second. What an advantage. I mean, I like. Kevin growing up in Louisiana. Used to like to practice in the rain, even. Recapture the points lead for number 44, if that's the case. Look at that deep water. That's where you got to be tight and sharp for and Sometimes they pull in the clutch all the way, not to sell the motor, and purposely skid the back tire. Pitch it all the way around, get that corner made before they even get there. These are the conditions that just play into the favor of Kevin Windham's smooth style, his great balance and throttle control. 
And that's how you ride in these conditions. Providing he stays healthy here in the outdoors. He gets better and better as the season progresses. They put the pressure on. Kevin Windham, number 44, has pulled up very, very close to Windham. And Windham is about ready to lap Ezra Lassen. He's ready to be the points leader and be getting lapped. Whoa! Tortelli to the inside! Sebastian Tortelli has taken the lead from Kevin Windham. I don't know. And here comes Kevin Windham right back again. Better up that hill. And Tortelli's down now. Sebastian Tortelli adds more bad luck. And not only did he get the lead and lose it right away, then he went down, but it appears he's going to hold on to second. Kevin not as clean as he was a little while ago. Clean it out, put it back again. The checkers for Kevin Windham, his first moto win of 1999. The entire event. Can Kevin Windham, number 14, do it again? He got the whole shot in the first moto, and look at that, an incredible whole shot for Kevin Windham. Suzuki, number seven, is right up there banging bars. Who starts? Kevin Windham, the third member of Team Honda, is out in front. With that was interesting that the guy that's won the first moto has gone on to sweep. The only time that hasn't happened, the irony of that is that it was Kevin Windham. He won Hangtown, he went 3-2, and I think he's looking to change that today. And the rate he's going today, David, he's going to salt the clouds in Redbud. Of course, when he won that overall earlier in the season, it kind of bummed him out that he didn't have a moto win. As we take a look at the Honda scoreboard with Wyndham, Ward, Albertine, the top three of the air, the last lap for him. And it would mean his very first 250 national outdoor sweep, a 1-1 for Kevin Wyndham. About 80% of the riders out there trying their hardest. That's the kind of day that he's had. But this kind of riding, David Bailey, it's going to get him right back into the points race. The checkers for Kevin Wyndham. Man, where did you learn to ride in the mud like that? Well, early early yesterday, I, I just felt good when I come to this track, and I, I had it in my mind that I was going to do good. And uh, you know, I was a little disappointed when it started raining today, but I said, hey, you know, we got to do it. We might as well go out and have as much fun as we can. And I tell you what, going one minute, don't get any funner. Getting set for our first 250 moto of the afternoon from Red Bud. They're underway, and the red lights are out in front. Full of rocks. And out in front, it's Kevin Windham and Ezra Lusk. But the man out in front right now is Kevin Windham. He doesn't look like he wants to give it up. It's just the best feeling to get the whole shot. A beautiful day like this. A huge crowd. Comfortable with the racetrack. The track is just beautiful. Softest I've ever seen it. Nice and sandy. Getting rough. Kevin Windham is our leader as we rejoin our first moto of 250 action from Red Bud Track and Trail, round six of AMA Motocross. Kevin has been absolutely perfect in picking his lines. The pipe that protected from getting dinged by rocks, that thing's been slapping. Look at this battle, side by side, Albertine and Windham for first. Kevin could be in the points lead right now if he hadn't said, had such a lousy first round, but he's got momentum on his side right now. First. And bar to bar, Lusk and Albertine, this is a big move, points-wise. Ezra Lusk gets back into second place. That would tie Tortelli and Lusk for the points lead going into the second moto. Look, Kevin pushing it all the way to the edge, his rear wheel almost slid over the first of pushing all the way to the end. Lusk took advantage. Being able to keep the pressure on Albi, he did the Rusk is right there keeping him honest, but I just don't know if there's an opportunity from here to the finish line for Ezra. One more turn. The crowd waving him on as the checkers now are out for Kevin Windham. Ezra Lusk just right behind him. Both of them picking up a bushel basket of points go for our first photo of the 250 action. See who gets the edge. Number 14, Kevin Windham, just in front of Greg Albertine. Very close to Ward, has taken over first place as Ward has moved back to second. So much going on in the first couple laps. So much competition out there. Ward, battle up front. Does so well in this racetrack. And as Mike has the horsepower. Oh, look at that, Kevin Windham. Five. Try to help Albertine as much as he can. Ward looking back and look at the inside move by Wyndham. So Wyndham is our leader with Ward in second, down in third, Albertine is in fifth. Morocco and Albertine, second and third behind Wyndham. Beautiful timing over that plateau, sticks it right on the downside. Where near him. 
Uh, it suit him just fine to come in and learn that something happened. Kevin Windham takes the checkered flag, winning the first 250 moto. They're really going to affect these guys to sign us sideways, and I think they're going to try to beat the rain. We're off and running the 250s. Doug Henry gets that whole shot. In good position in third, but Doug Henry out there. Kevin Windham looking for the sweep. So all I have to do here is just concentrate on myself right there. And here comes Ward to the outside. Look out, Kevin Windham almost got picked off. That is weird. He's in that mechanics area, trying to get a signal to your rider. See John Dowd back in 35th. Can't make the pass on Ward, but he lets him know he's there. And cutting to the inside, looks back and makes the pass into second place. That was such a smooth pass on Ward. It is now for the lead, Doug Henry with Kevin Windham just hounding him. Number 14, a team Honda. One side or the other. Up the hill we go. Windham on the throttle, cuts to the inside. Henry veers away, and we've got a new leader now. That's for him. Henry this time follows him. We could feel that the lap before. Oh, Jimmy Putt moving into third shot or what? I think it's this track is the best condition I've ever seen it in terms of uh, how nice the soil is and how much they've trimmed up the trees and the spectators have up some passing lanes and get people closer to the, to the riders as they come by. But get way out of control. It'll be easy, but I, I don't think Kevin is going to leave an open. Cutting through the lap riders now. There's Putt right on his tail. The checkers, and Kevin Windham has done it. That had to have been a great moment to be a part of yet. Henry up there, Button, the whole crew. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a pretty fun race. It, it got pretty hectic there with like three laps to go. I got in the lappers pretty heavy, and uh, you know, I was nervous. You can hear that thumper behind you, no matter if it's two corners or five Everybody corners. Here's Davey Combs from Butts Creek, Maryland. Butts Creek Motocross Park for the FIM Motocross final round of the 250 World Championships. The World Champion. Stefan Everett's on the right, one of his handlers on the left, anxiously awaiting. Heat two here, there's number one, Sebastian Tortelli gets a pretty good jump, it looks like Kevin beat him out. David Billiman on the inside though, will get the whole shot, Windham is right there. Well, this, puts, this puts Kevin Windham in a great position for the overall. Obviously he's got Hughes back there behind him to have that buffer between himself and Everett's, Everett's, but Billiman's body in order to make that bike ride smooth goes through all kinds of contortion. You see right there trying to keep that bike low to the ground. He squats down. Very interesting rider to watch. And then uh, if he starts to feel a little bit of pressure from behind or can see. Shot of him kneeling down. A very sad a face. A tear coming from his eyes uh, gave him away. Yes, I think you've got to say whatever you can say to keep yourself in the right frame of mind and back at it. It could be viewed as that and now He's trying to just cap it off with a GP victory and beat Albertine and probably make himself feel a little bit better. Going, well, I know I have to be to win this championship. You'll start to see Villeman. With him to the inside. What a burst of speed. I was about to say, you'll start to see Villeman protecting his line and maybe looking around a little bit more, but it didn't even take that long. So number 114 on the plate. Number 214 on the jersey. Takes the lead, Kevin Windham. Kevin winning his very first national overall this year, and that was early in the season outside of Sacramento, California. Looking sharp. Starting to salute the crowd. His American flags are waving. He's going to win himself a GP. That's going to feel good. A lot of insight into what to expect. 1999, he got his first national win, and here he gets his first GP win. That move into third place in Moto 1 was a must but he came through beautifully here in Heat 2 as well. Hi, right, Kevin, how's it feel? You just won the first Grand Prix ever in your life. It feels great, you know, I didn't know how I was gonna do after the first medal. I was a little disappointed with uh, a poor start, but uh, I got to start near the second medal and uh, everything worked out for the best. This was probably the funnest race I've done all year. Finally, all the talk coming from Europe and everything, they remarked the Americans are cowards. How's it feel to step up there and carry the flag like that? Uh, it feels great, and uh, I wish more of the Americans could have been here. Uh, really, yeah, you know, it's, I don't think anybody understands what, what we go through as riders, uh, you know, flying 28 weeks in a row. So, uh, you know, I have the Americans back. I am an American, and, uh, you know, it wasn't really a race that, that I wanted to do. But once I got here, man, I was just having a blast. You just got to give the Americans all the respect you can. And, and you know, Everett was a is a great rider, and uh, unfortunately he made a comment like that. But, uh, you know, you can't take any away, anything away from from those guys either. You know, they're great riders. Texas Stadium. There's number 14, Kevin Windham. Main event from Texas Stadium. 
The whole shot winner. Jeremy McGrath has gone down. The accident, they got together, different lines. Eugene comes out of the blue groove and into that great timing section. But what Wyndham was doing was jumping out of that inside corner. It was a picture of McGrath is face planted right into the hillside. He gets the whole shot money, the Yahoo.com whole shot money. But this young man, Kevin Wyndham, is looking for his first win on the season. Eight laps of that particular race. So in his two wins in three years here, he's led every lap. First victory. Heel clickers for everybody. Yamaha has dominated this series. Kawasaki grabbed Daytona, and now Honda enters the picture. Oh, what a relief it is for Kevin Windham and Honda. Good job. Morocco, number five. Morocco, not with the greatest of starts, but it is RC once again. It's on. Ricky Carmichael and Kevin Windham. Windham now with the lead. Number four is Ricky Carmichael. Musk is up in there, right behind Tortelli. Kevin Windham out in front. He does not like to be out in front this year. He's had some problems that way. Uh, Kevin is awesome in the opening laps. I'll never forget how fast he came by me in the first lap of the uh, Glen Helen opener. He came by, the, by the second lap, he had a six second lead. I don't think he's going to be able to do that with Ricky on his tail here, but he needs to know that Ricky's capable of staying with him the whole race. Just Let's see if uh, Ricky can take advantage of it now. Puts down the throttle. Ricky Carmichael goes into the lead. Off the hook and get away. And here comes Wyndham back again. He needs to stay in this fight the whole race. You need to worry about trying to get him back instantly. Figure out why Ricky's putting that pressure on. Figure out where he's going faster. Honda rider Ezra Lusk in fifth. You see Albertine and Larocco not getting the best of starts. In my opinion, that's just practice habits need to improve a little bit. So far, Ricky Carmichael has not made mistakes while I'm being out in front that Ricky Carmichael is not really pulling a lead on Kevin Windham or Sebastian Tortelli. Even more if he can't pull a little mistake. Whoa, big mistake there. And these guys are keeping close. And look at that, just like a rocket. Kevin Windham goes by Ricky Carmichael to regain the lead. And Tortelli is right there. Look at that. He's just sandwiched between these guys right now while he's trying to think about that mistake and smooth himself out he's making a lot of little bobbles here and there and like i said he wasn't able to pull away when he thought he could especially the way he rode the first moto kevin windham taking the lead over ricky carmichael windham won the overall here last year lead just by being smart staying close keeping the pressure on but look at the pressure he faces well let's turn now to a guy who knows about as much about ricky carmichael as anyone i believe he thought he was going to pull away but he didn't got a little bit flustered and started getting a little bit of a battle with those guys look how he goes wide to try to cut off tortelli there join this party whoa he gets stuffed <laughs> tortelli the fellow fellow frenchman almost took him off the track and tortelli in the same move moves in front of ricky carmichael and so does milliman victory in america here's our leader kevin windham who just checked out what a wonderful race for kevin i'm really encouraged to see this too his starts have been awesome frenchman to win here at hangtown Cruises over that big downhill double. I don't feel like jumping this one more time. There. And the crowd very receptive to this victory as Kevin Windham takes a leisurely ride. You're a second moto guy. You went out there today. You had Carmike with you at the beginning. You broke him. And off you went for your win. Yeah, you know, I mean, I hate I missed it by a point, but uh, I went down that first moto just because I was trying really hard and... Uh, his bikes are working great. I just, you know, I was pushing it to the limit, and the track got pretty dry through today. But uh, no, I, I got to be stoked with that second moto. And uh, 50s, you know, like with a great challenge from these riders we're seeing here, number four. Don't figure him out of this one. And we're off and running. Tortelli, a better start this time. Once again, Wyndham gets the great start. Kevin Wyndham, number 14, his second hole shot of the day. We'll see if he can. Prevent himself from slipping backwards this time, David. But looking at what's happened so far this season, I think I'd be a little bit more worried about number four back there than both Dowd and, and uh, Ryan Hughes. And looking just as smooth as he did early in the first moto. Look at all those ruts. Kept passing him. 
he looks really comfortable right now. He's starting to pull away, and if he can keep this pace, keep this little bit of cushion for a few laps, and get comfortable, then I don't care if Carmichael catches him. He'll have a little bit more firepower, and he won't. But right now, Kevin, I don't think he could feel any better when he sees the checkered flag. Look at him nodding. He's shaking his head going, yep, I'm the man. I'm feeling it. I'm going to win this thing. <laughs> That's how far out in front he was. He was just having a good time this last lap. He educated to the fact that uh, this has been one of his favorite tracks as he goes up to the finish line very easily. Takes the checkered flag for his first moto win of the season. For the Kevin first 250 moto from Washougal, Washington. Off and running. And it's down with the whole shot. Well, all the leaders are right there. Ricky said he wanted to keep an eye on Kevin Wyndham today. Wyndham's right behind him. Here comes Ricky Carmichael. The crowd is going crazy. Carmichael moving into second place behind Ezra Lusk. Fast train. All the big guns up front. Look at Wyndham on the outside. Wyndham just blitzes by John Dowd. Or not, you might remember that he is not pointed out in 125 Supercross. Here comes Carmichael with the challenge. Inside on Ezra Lusk, but couldn't quite make it that time. Look at the speed up that hill. And the roost here really hurts. You see Carmichael trying to stay just to the side. As Ricky goes bar to bar downhill. Tough move by Ricky Carmichael. Might make it stick. This time he does. Wyndham, a nice move on Ezra Lusk. An exciting area as they go through the woods. Step back in, get away from Kevin. Nice recovery to stay close right here. Here it comes. Kevin to Wyndham on the inside. Beats him in the whoops. Can he make it to the corner? Because Carmichael has given way to other riders in first motos before this season. But I don't think he's been passed like this before. Ricky can get him there. I love the way they have the whoop section placed here. Look at Ricky, though. He's very close. Kevin Windham makes a little mistake. Number four will be right on him. Windham. The whoops and the checkers. Nice ride for Kevin Windham. Ricky Carmichael second. And we'll be underway with our second 250 moto from Washugo. Morocco once again getting trapped behind it. Ferry, Carmichael, Wyndham, one, two, three. And he's second. Ricky would still win by 24 points. Almost a complete moto. Just never know. And it's dangerous for Ricky right now. Look at that. Whoa, Wyndham. A nice move in the corner on Villeman. Ferry with a third place in the first moto in case you just tuned in. Carmichael taking second, 250s in the final moto of the day. Tim Ferry, our leader. There's Ricky Carmichael now, starting to step it up even closer. He's got RC breathing down his neck. Oh, what a move by Ricky Carmichael. Right. I wonder if Chad has to put extra safety wire on that throttle grip. <laughs> he twists it hard. Will have his sixth straight overall victory. Here's Wyndham making the move on Ferry. He wants to get up there and put the heat on Ricky Carmichael. I mean, it's just like coming off the gate. You don't come off the gate and hang off the back. You get over the front end. That's the most aggressive position, and Kevin's in that position a lot. If Wyndham hopes to win the overall, he's got to take Carmichael one more time. From Washougal, Washington, the battle for the lead in our final 250 moto is on. Wyndham was the victor in the first moto, but can he do it twice in one day? against Ricky Carmichael, the defending champion. Wyndham now starting to show a wheel. Now, Wyndham is all over the place looking for a line to pass. What surprises me is that Ricky is, looks like he's trying as hard as he can, and Kevin's just going wherever he wants to go on the racetrack. That's not easy. And he makes it look easy, though. Oh, yeah. It's he's amazing. In, he's in control of this battle right now. I think Ricky can feel that. Oh, especially, yeah, you know, give it to somebody once, but not twice. While Ricky Carmichael is looking for his sixth consecutive victory on the season to become the only rider in motocross history in the 250s to win six consecutive races in back-to-back -back years. Give the nod there to Kevin Windham. 
Let's see what happens in the whoops. Boy, what a hippity hop for Wyndham to get into the whoops. Look at Kevin. Just wherever Ricky goes, he goes somewhere else. I can do that. He proved it the first moto, and he's doing it again here now. He must be feeling tired. He gets nervous and tight. Look at this. Bar to bar we go. Whoa. The fans have every right to go crazy on this one as Wyndham makes the pass. Can he make it stick? Here comes Carmichael to the inside. Oh, he slipped out of the tail end. Bikes fishtailing around here and there, and you can see the, the extra effort he's putting in to try to match Kevin's pace, and it's just not there today. So the, the closest guy has been Kevin, and maybe he can start something here. At, and he hands down beat Ricky, both motos. Stay upright on the whoops. Look out. Here comes the champ. The checkers for Wyndham. What a great feeling this has got to be for Kevin Wyndham, who struggled through a Supercross season. Uh, no, I mean, Kevin's riding awesome. He toyed with me out there. I tell you, I was riding as hard as I could, and uh, he beat me. We're ready to go for the first moto from Delma, Pennsylvania, for the 250s. John Dow already moved into second place. Carpenter has moved into fourth in the KTM, and Wyndham makes the pass on Waz. Waz got caught up and cased it just a little bit. Race this year, and that lone time came as a result of a broken chain in the final moto. Fourth and fifth, as you see on our field summary, and Wyndham right now is approaching the checkered flag on the final lap. There it is. Cruises across the finish line. The but can he? We're off and running. The final moto of 2001. Track has been a double-edged sword, really, because if he didn't win, people were down on him right away. A lot of them felt that he wasn't living up to their expectations. Or that was a valuable look at the look at the way that Kevin just cuts over that berm. He doesn't like the berm. If you get into the berm, it looks good for a moment, but then it gets all rough coming out. Kevin's got enough of a lead now. He can just make his own lines out there. 250 motocross seeing this concern. He's looking for his sixth career victory. Research and development is concerned. Here comes Kevin Woodnam. It's the 35th annual Hangtown Classic from Sacramento, California, and they are away. Great start for Kevin Wyndham again. Back out front, Nathan Ramsey had a good start going up the inside as well. Taking a hiatus from the sport, not completely. He's done a little bit of training, but he comes back, David. He hasn't missed a beat. He's flying. Got a sizable lead over Carmichael right now. Well, for all the Kevin Wyndham fans out there, his lead is growing. His lap times are a little bit faster, about a second, second and a half. Then Ricky Carmichael. The streak has come to an end, so the man who last beat Ricky Carmichael does the job again. Your winner, moto number one at the Hangtown Classic. Ricky kind of stunned, like, huh, so where do I go? Usually I win and I go over there. You and Dilla, we're set to go. Danny, he took off his chest protector. I don't know if he thought he was going to get the whole shot, but Kevin Windham on board the four-stroke is all but gone. The ride is all but gone, and this is what I think a lot of people, Davey, have been waiting to see. Kevin Windham just absolutely dominated the race. Ricky Carmichael, I dare say, is nowhere to be found. Look at that. Not even in the picture. You see him wrap around the trees. National so far this year. Back to our leader. This is Kevin Windham. His lead has increased 16.25 seconds. Need to look at some checkers and an amazing performance put this into perspective and do you think he's already thinking about moto number two well he's got to because he's beaten ricky before you know this is not like the first time this has ever happened a lot of pressure on kevin windham as he takes the checkered flag and the win here in moto number one and a lot of pressure on ricky carmichael will the streak of 21 overall national wins continue this is moto number two stop number seven from unadilla and it looks like Carmichael, much better start on the inside, and right there goes Wyndham. Already getting a little room, but Carmichael is right there. Whoa! Big jump out of gravity, Cavity. Into the fray early on, sits in third, but your leader, the man who won moto number one, Kevin Wyndham, and he is looking to make history today. And Ricky Carmichael, 21 overall national wins. It may be coming to a close, courtesy of KW. Todd, who's got more pressure on him? Wyndham to break the streak or Carmichael to keep it? He's pulling Ricky Carmichael. Carmichael, look at that lead. So number 14, Kevin Windham in first. Ricky Carmichael sits in second. Down in. And 
and he looks aggressive today. Wyndham's last big win was in... You know, Todd, I think part of that is because on this side of the valley where the mechanics are, it's a little more technical, and I think Carmichael's going faster, but when you get on the far side, and Wyndham lets that big dog eat going up those hills. Sarge, as Davey pointed out, he looks very fast in that technical section, starting to close the gap in on Kevin Wyndham. And Ricky Carmichael is in the race of his life. Does the streak live on, or does it die here at Unadilla? Plus, they just lapped him. These guys are in a war, and I tell you, the, whoa, you see a fan out of the track. Look at that front, I'm very impressed. Look at that, just flying around that corner. See Carmichael looking for a way around nominal in this sport. Well, the sting of defeat will last with Ricky Carmichael for a week, but what a breath of fresh air. Kevin Windham has done it. The streak is over. Number four will have to settle for second place today. Look at that. Looks like Ricky doesn't want to stop. Playing. Uh, well done, Ricky. Well done. You know, I mean, he's been so phenomenal, just so unbeatable. And, uh, man, I'm just I'm just stoked that it's me up there doing it, you know. I think. No one's ever doubted the fact that you're one of the most unbelievable riders ever to ride a motorcycle. It's not time to get cocky. It's time to go out there and just keep working. He's an incredible guy. I had I had better lap times than him today, and he knew it. I knew it because of the lap times. Ladies and gentlemen. And still, he did not let me go, you know. He just kept fighting and fighting and fighting, and that's what he does. I learned something from him whether I beat him or not. So. Uh, it has, man. It's been great. You know, it, uh, Kevin's the last guy to beat me on the 250s, and outdoors at least, and he beat me today. He said, man, that guy was on a rail, and uh, I was twisting that sucker as fast as I could go, and he was better. I told you who was on the line. We've got a great day of racing. We're off and running at Washougal. Big wide left hand turn into no one's surprise, or maybe to everyone's surprise, number 14, Wyndham. Kevin Wyndham up into the first corner. Just He's able to drift wide, protect the inside of the next corner, and just keep having fun. Throw that thing sideways, you know, and, and have a good time out there. Central Mississippi is your leader here in Moto Number One, the 250 class. Number four, Ricky Carmichael, the defending champ. He said for Ricky Carmichael, he's got to keep in contact with him visually. And right now, unless he's got Superman vision, Carmichael is not going to be seeing him. Wow, look at this. Pacific Northwest, and what a beautiful backdrop for the winner in moto number one. This is moto number two from Washougal. Kevin Windham got the first victory. Let's see, David, if he can put this one to bed. Stole it from him. He's boss in there, too, and Nick Way on a 250. Amazing. He was able to get that kind of a jump. Looks like Lewis did a little wave at the fans or somebody he might, oh, that could have been ugly. Waving at the crowd as he went off that jump. Lost his focus, made a mistake, and he's now not in the lead. And he was in second immediately, so. He, if he doesn't do that here, Kevin's well, if he can put together these two motos and back-to-back -back overall wins, four motos in a row, get the ball rolling, as soon as he gets that momentum. But he's in danger right now as he's dropped all the way back, got a second in moto number one. Meanwhile, Kevin Windham is all but checked out. Oh, and Windham, as Ricky Carmichael finally comes into view, Kevin Windham finally sees some competition. Carmichael unable to close the gap at the very end, and Kevin Windham will pick up another victory. 30 board is sideways, and we are racing in Binghamton, New York. Moto number one in the 250 class. Number 14, Kevin Windham emerges from the pack in the front. He'll get the whole shot with Ricky Carmichael right off his backside. Right away, let him know that, hey, last week, get used to it. Everyone's going to get beat from now on. I think he was irritated with those four moto losses, and he's coming right back and challenging Kevin. Here comes Carmichael to the inside. He takes over the lead from Wyndham. Wyndham. Off to one side or the other so he doesn't get beat up with rocks the whole time. Wyndham trying to stay out of the roost of Ricky Carmichael. What I like about this, though, is Wyndham is not losing him. Look at this. Wyndham goes to the inside. A perfect line. Gets on the throttle. Here he comes out of it. Carmichael. Ricky protecting that inside. So hard to get stopped for that corner. And again, you see that Kevin just crossing over the line. Back. Stuff. I think good for Kevin. Well, this is a fantastic spectators viewing venue here at Broom Tioga. As David pointed out, that long speed straightaway, big air. Carmichael and Wyndham both here to tell you that it's just going to be a little harder than you thought. Carmichael leads Wyndham into the foliage here at Broom Tioga Sports Complex. We have got a great race. And give Kevin Wyndham credit, David. Inside still, Kevin's got to do something pretty amazing to put a pass on him here. This time, Wyndham hard to the outside, crosses over Carmichael, but Wyndham is right there. Kevin Wyndham, he is on the four-stroke. Carmichael on the two-stroke. Both of them right in Hondas as they make their way down to the speed zone. They drop overall, and has two overall victories on the circuit this year. And Ricky Carmichael, your leader. I see Ricky making a little mistake right there, getting into that soft berm. I think he went out as fast as he could go. 
I don't think he's got much more than that. If Kevin realizes that, that should do a lot for his confidence. I think this is working on the psyche of Ricky Carmichael, who usually is able to check out and drop guys. He's unable to shake Kevin Windham. Yeah, the thumping sound of that four-stroke that sits about a bike length off his back fender. And Kevin Windham, number 14 on for Ricky Carmichael right now. And usually it's the other way around. Look at Windham. There he goes. He gets the pass done. Still goes wild. Oh, Carmichael goes down. It really comes down to the second moto. Kevin Windham, though, will celebrate in moto number one and a victory here at the Broom Tioga Sports Complex. Soil. Millville was a different deal. That's like the Daytona. You know, the 30 40 sideways. This is the 250 main from Phoenix, Arizona. Shots going home with number 14, Kevin Windham, on board the Honda. Here comes the Cobra, Dan Villeman. And they get together, and it's going to be Windham who gets pushed out. Great movie scene. Grab the Blake. Oh, look at this. Oh, my. Oh, wow. Kevin Hello. Windham. Coach David Bailey is going to be working on him a lot to make sure that. But your leader right now, as we look at the Tassot running order, is Kevin Windham out in 250 front. main event. Kevin Windham. After a long layoff, he got a nice tune-up during the Outdoor Nationals. Cameron got some victories. From Anaheim, California, our third and final stop here. Reed gets a terrific start, so it'll be Reed and Wyndham together again. And it looks like this time Wyndham will... Triple midway through, and wow, Wyndham jumping right up towards his back and speed through the whoops. Just about even there, Todd. Both men able to triple through here. Chad Reed airing it out. Kevin Windham right behind him. Would love to see that. Chad Reed, though, silky smooth. And Kevin Windham, Look at the run. he's got the speed. Order. Most people can't even ride through those whoops. Chad can make directional changes. In. Here at Anaheim, very tough. Chad Reed looking to do something that hasn't been done in a long time, and that is sweep Anaheim. And no one has ever won all three Anaheims. And this time, Kevin Windham does it. He comes to the inside. Right, tie it. Let's see what happens. make a pass momentarily unable to make it stick and here he comes again an uncharacteristic bobble so, comes right back in the next corner lots of tight corners on this course everybody's been talking about inside i think that's part of this chess match showing kevin windham something else he knows windham has got the ability Chad reed makes a mistake again he was unable to triple out into the whip section windham won a great opportunity to find out and kevin windham has a bobble did he miss a gear or something right there? kevin windham now trying to regain the lead goes to the inside line. Chad Reed sets mine split. They come together one more time and it's Wyndham who's got the inside line. And he this time makes Reed's able to triple through it. Wow, oh, that's the first time I think we've seen that line, the double then triple there. Mike LaRocco is starting to make a chase. Here it comes through the whoop section. Look at the drive. Inside line possibly here and he goes in oh. and oh, Reed goes down. You can't say enough about it. He is saluting the fans and I think the fans of California, your winner. the finish line for his fifth main event win of the season. They don't With come Chad any Reed. cooler than number 22, Chad Reed, on board his Yamaha right next to Kevin Windham looks like he's going to double into first place. And Chad Reed right Wiener now. Burner is looking for his first podium of the season run in second right now. Your are leader 14 on board the Honda. Kevin Windham out in front. The title goes to Chad Reed. Off the drum instead of last year when Ricky Carmichael claimed that your winner, 250 main, Kevin Windham. The greatest 250 in a long time as we take a look at taking off for Ricky Carmichael back in the game. Carmichael leads them into the green flag with the race, but I think they do a lot better than he's doing. Oh, and Carmichael's down. The picture. I, I bet he comes around that corner camera and says, I cannot believe after Carmichael. Everything that has happened thus far, Carmichael leading for the first six laps. Front after Ricky Carmichael oh! built it all. Oh, so Matt will lead it with him now. I don't believe this. And what do Ricky see it? Oh, oh, Carmichael goes down. Your leader, Kevin Windham, with half a lap to go. Carmichael got the whole shot. Your winner from Anaheim. Kevin Window. He went down where everyone else has gone down, but he rode with confidence. I knew Ricky was going far. He was doing the triple. He was just going nuts. He was pulling away from me. He said slow and steady, and it worked for me. And then with about three laps to go, I fell. The thing, I didn't even know I was in the lead because I was on the ground so long. And then, you know, see that checker flag come out, man. It's just an incredible feeling. And toch benieuwd wat Ramon is ons eerste man. Wat Strijbels, die is redelijk goed zijn daarvoor. Komt tot het zesde plaats. En dat is beter misschien voor Ramon achtste. Dus Kevin Strijbels is ook goed aan het rijden. Dit zou eens een onverhoopt sterke reeks kunnen worden. Van de Supercross en Motocross Series Steve Woodlock.
Uh, ja, en de teammanager, dat is uh, de Belg, Roger de Koster. Die is ja, nog altijd ja, altijd ja, het is uh, Wintem. 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 En, en ik uh, stelde mij de vraag, omdat er een fotograaf... Dansen op een uh, slappe koord, heb ik de indruk. Dus uh, hij gaat... En dan moeten wij nu Gelipaard. hier de dan... Amerikanen even in de gat kunnen Van houden. Van Evers daar. En uh, is hij goed weg zoals hij in de eerste reeks uh, wegkwam, dan is er iets uh, mogelijk ook uh, gaat de strijd tussen Frankrijk en de Verenigde Staten. Op dit moment uh, wel. Het uh, grootste moment gebeurt het. België waarschijnlijk geen derde zegen. Maar ze gaan vechten tot het einde. Dat speelt dan momenteel voor ons een uh, erg in ons nadeel. Ja, oh, maar daar mag uh, niks meer mee gebeuren hoor. Dat, uh, dat moet nog... Uh, in orde komen, dat kan nog altijd. Windham, is hij op komst? Is het binnen voor de Verenigde Staten? Jawel. De motocross of nations is surely on its way back. Carmichael Tedesco, Hi. president, presenting the red plate there to Carmichael. America came, America have come good. Yeah, I felt really good the first moto, an unfortunate mistake. I went down. I was so nervous that I cost it for our team. I'm just glad we could bring the trophy back home to, to America. Yeah, it was a, a great day. You know, we all won today, not just myself. Uh, everybody did their part. We showed the world today why we are number one, and uh, I'm speechless. Gates drop! And they are going to earn their money today here at Unadilla. We saw it at Red Bud, we see it again here today. The Red Bull KTM. With an injury from a crash of practice, it's anybody's race today. It's Alessi, it's Wyndham. And Wyndham, who has such a storied past here at Unadilla. Success, this place brings a smile to his face. The pressure is on Mike Alessi. He looks over at Wyndham, takes the lead for the first time in Moto1. We're going to see if he kept the engine running. See how many positions he's going to lose out of that. But Kevin Wyndham, awesome ride here, the first moto. Pumping his fist, great victory. Check it, flag. You may have seen from that graphic, best ever result. For Andrew Shaw, horsepower is key. You see, Mike Alessi gets a great jump out of the gate. And then Mike Alessi takes the first shot towards taking the title here. Mike Alessi came up just a little bit short in winning that first moto, ended up second. Oh, down goes Alessi, right out of the lead. The same place where number 14, Kevin Wyndham, fell the first moto, and Tim Ferry. Than that, he could win the overall if he could hang on and win this one. He won moto number two. And it's just incredible to think how many years Ricky won this title. Is it seven in a row? Yeah, and win of the year. He's really having an outstanding ride today, other than that one slip up in the first moto. Here it is, checkered flag for Kevin Windham. He wins moto number two, should finish. Side there, he look at Wyndham closing in, closing in on him, and then short look at side. Wyndham. Wow, Three look at in. look how much worse it is. Look, at Kevin Wyndham has never won here. He has that extra incentive to go maximize. Oh, here he comes, comes. Wyndham. Wyndham around the outside. Oh man, oh, we cut him off. Oh, and he just gets drenched. I mean, when you are right behind. Oh, oh Dad Reed, Dad Reed down. down. There goes Wyndham. Wyndham goes by oh, Reed. Thing right, oh, biggest man. thing right here is Reedy can't get excited. And gotta be careful. Kevin Wyndham 0 oh for 8 here at Daytona. Continuing to battle. Oh, here he's we go. Done. Reedy going to the outside. Oh, he gets stuck. He's, he's stuck. stuck. Done. He's stuck. Oh, Kevin. So frustrating. Here. There he goes. He's got it back going, guys. He stalled the bike. Up. Reed is off the bike again. The leader. Wyndham again. Look at him. Look. He's going to go. He can't enter the track where he went off, and it was he took quite a bit of an advantage there. Yeah. And wow. That, it is good. Yeah. Wow. We got a three-way battle. Oh, oh, oh. That one. He's done. Oh. He stalled it. Oh, oh he stalled it. the tailpipe on Chad's bike. Uh -oh. Oh. Oh. It's not over yet. No. No. Is this? Oh, no. Two turns to go. You're six behind. Oh, look oh, at the end. Oh, look at the 
the Done. frustration. Here's Kevin Windham right here. Here comes Kevin Windham. Does he even know? Does he even know? There he goes. There he Kevin goes. Windham's going to win. Yeah, he he does. Attrition. One of the most incredible cross as Kevin Windham sloshes his way to victory.